Stardom has always had storylines going on throughout its entire promotion. Every wrestling promotion does tend to have storylines. It's part of wrestling. It's not it's not a thing dedicated just to other forms of media. The thing with Stardom though is that they never usually have straight forward storylines that are just kind of told to you. A lot of it is interpretation uh, and a lot of it is told in the ring and not really with words. Well, I've noticed that lately we've been getting a lot more in terms of blatant storytelling in stardom. And I believe it has nothing really to do with Bushi Road itself, but it could mean something coming up in stardom. Now, right now they have a number of different storylines that I feel like are already more fleshed out and told than any kind of storyline that they had a couple years ago. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of those storylines currently going on right now. I'm not going to be talking about the little ones that have been going on forever, like Samire um, and Saki's kind of little rivalry and whatnot. I'm not really strictly talking about rivalries. I'm more talking about things that kind of have a progressive story right now. So let's get to it. Miyagi leaving Odo Tai. Andres Miyagi has left Odo Tai, or should we say she was expelled? During the Tag League tournament, tensions between Kagetsu and Miyagi were clear. They would interact as minimal as possible. Miyagi or Kagetsu would leave as soon as the match was over. Something was clearly wrong here. During their final match in the tournament, Miyagi intentionally tries to hit Kagetsu with their board resulting in an aggressive return action from Kigetsu. This allows Bobby Tyler to roll up Kigetsu and get the win. After that happened, they had their titles on the line against Queen's Quest. During the match, Miyagi was clearly avoiding Kigetsu, even moving her hand at the last second to not allow Kigetsu to tag out. Ultimately, this time Miyagi betrayed them and succeeded, hitting Kigetsu and then Samurai with their Odo board. The rest of Odotai jumped Miyagi and Queen's Quest would go on to win the match, causing them to lose their titles. After the match, Kagetsu exiled Miyagi from Odotai and issued a challenge to her for a singles match to settle things once and for all. At the time of making this video, the match hasn't happened yet, but it's sure to be amazing. Arisa and Tam for Orisa and Tam, I won't go too much into this one since I have an entirely different video already made talking about it called Orisa vs. Tam 7 Months in the Making. Since their match, they didn't really seem to grow any closer. Tam still had it out for Orisa, that was until the tag league was announced, and to everyone's surprise, Tam said she wanted to team with Orisa. She said until she took that white belt from her that she wanted Orisa by her side. It was clear that the icy heart of Tam had melted a little when it comes to Arisa. Through the tournament, they still clashed, but little by little they got closer, until the finals came. They were able to pull it off and win the tournament. Tam says she wants to dream together with Arisa, and embraces her in a hug. Ever since then, Arisa and Tam have been pretty close. Tam occasionally still treats Arisa meanly, but most of the time it's clear that Tam likes Arisa, and appreciates their friendship. Julia joining. Same as the one before this, since I already have a video talking about a lot of this named Unscripted Viewing, Julia signing to stardom, I won't be going into too much detail about what happened in the beginning of this. Since all of that controversy, Julia started tweeting vague things with pictures. Then it was announced she would be facing Hanakamura during the December 24th show, which is Stardom's last show of the year. During the press conference, Hana and Julia got into a scuffle, with hair pulling and all. It was later announced that the December 24th show was not her debut, but she would be debuting on the Shinkiba show on the 8th. Her opponent would be none other than Hazuki, who is currently on her retirement stretch. Hazuki would tweet a message saying that Stardom wishes her to be Julia Stepping Stone and that she would lose. This understandably caused some confusion amongst fans, as this not only didn't sound very enthusiastic, it sounded like she was clearly breaking kayfabe. A later tweet clarified that someone is a stepping stone if that's how the viewers look at it. 
While this is all Google Translate garbage, I think what she meant was that Stardom is booking Julia's first match in the hopes that she wins, and that Hazuki sees it as Stardom using her as a stepping stone for a new star. Her second tweet seems to imply that she herself doesn't necessarily see this as a terrible thing, or that she doesn't necessarily see herself as being a stepping stone. That's just my interpretation of a poorly translated tweet though, so take it with a grain of salt. Julia came and had a hard-fought battle with Hazuki, resulting in a win. She then acts super disrespectful to Hazuki, denying her a handshake, and saying some pretty messed up things like, thanks for being her stepping stone. She vows to lay a path of destruction through stardom, beating her next three opponents, Saki Kashima, Andres Miyagi, and then Hana Kimura. She calls out Hana to come to the ring, and Julia gets up in her face and says she wants to fight right now and that she cannot wait until the December 24th show. She takes a pretty mild swing at Hana, but that kind of sets Hana off, and they get into another fight that ends up leading all the way outside and eventually to the backstage of the venue, screaming at each other the entire time and nearly tearing each other's hairs out. Whether you like Julia or not, it's pretty clear that Julia has made a very impactful debut, and is looking to make a name for herself. Jungle and Konami Jungle Kiona and Konami are having some issues with each other. Konami is getting frustrated at Jungle's inability to win. While they are the champions, they had a bit of a terrible run in the tag league, and a lot of that could be attributed to Jungle getting pinned too much. This caused Konami to start acting annoyed and upset with Jungle, resulting in many promos of awkward resentment towards Jungle and Jungle trying to ignore it. Of course, this ultimately led to their title defense against Tam and Arisa. During the pre-match promo and entrance, they seemed to be very out of sync and the resentment was still there. They ended up winning the match though, and said they had been planning the whole thing to make Arisa and Tam think they would be weaker than they were, to make it seem like there was some conflict between the two, stating that they were business partners. While they made it seem there was no ill will and that they were all patched up and it was all a trick, a couple of things makes me believe that that isn't entirely true and that this isn't entirely over. For one, Konami's resentment started in the tag league, so there was no one for them to be tricking at that point. Two, after they won the match, the two still acted weird when Daichi put the two's hands together. There was no point in acting at that point since they had already won the match. While this storyline could be over, I don't think it is, and so I included it still. Starlight Kid and Riho A minor storyline going on right now that is leading to many different things is Starlight Kid and Riho's friendship slash rivalry. After losing to Riho in her high-speed title shot, Starlight Kid announced that she wanted to team up with Riho for the Tag League to use that as an opportunity to learn more about Riho and then try to beat her for the title after. This led to them being fairly successful during the tournament, and even going on to time limit draw with the current champions, Jungle and Konami. After they lost the tournament though, Starlight Kid announced at a later show that she wanted to challenge for the tag belts with Riho, since they had tied against Konami and Jungle during the tournament. Of course, Riho accepted, and Starlight also reminds her that she is also coming after the high speed title. The storyline isn't very fleshed out and exciting like the others, but it is still something going on somewhat behind the scenes that we need to keep an eye on. Whether Kid will succeed and take the title from Riho is a question that still needs to be answered. As you can see, there are quite a number of different stories going on to get you interested. I personally think that the best stories going on right now are the ones involving Miyagi, Julia, Arisa, and Tam. I've gone on record saying that Arisa vs. Tam's story is the best storyline I've ever seen in wrestling, so that shouldn't be a surprise. The Miyagi one has me on the edge of my seat as I don't know what to expect. I really didn't see this coming, so it's kind of a shocker every new thing that happens in this story. Then, as you know, I kind of hyped myself up into a Julia fan before she even debuted. Everything about her just kind of hit all of my check marks, and I was kind of marking out for her before she even stepped in the ring. And I was a little worried that she was going to disappoint me like Riho had, but she didn't disappoint me, and that is what's important. She came in and killed it and made me even a stronger fan 
making me even more invested in her kind of invasion of stardom. Whatever the outcomes of these matches and these storylines, I think we will all be in for a treat when it comes to the resolutions or just following along on the journeys they take. We are truly in a new era of stardom storytelling.